We have some fast solar wind that's from a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and our sun continues to wake up by firing multiple solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Our sun continues to wake up this week. As we look back at the 14th, you can see in this bright region right here, whammo, right there, it launches an Earth-directed solar storm. Now, this solar storm wasn't that big, so it didn't cause much of a ruckus at Earth, but hey, who cares? I mean, we've been sitting at solar minimum for so long, I almost forgot what a solar storm looked like. And as if to remind me, we had some bright region on the high latitudes in the northern hemisphere, and it fires off not one, but Two solar storms, the last of the two solar storms was fired off less than a day ago. And this so solar storm is also Earth directed, but most likely, once again, it's gonna be very small. So don't expect all that much. We might get a little bit of aurora at high latitudes over the next few days. And that's also gonna be due to this coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone now. This coronal hole is sending us a little bit of fast wind, kind of a pocket of fast wind. And again, it's gonna make the aurora at high latitudes dance for a little while, but mid latitude to Aurora photographers, you're going to have to sit this one out, but at least you can have a smile on your face because it looks like the sun is coming out of its slumber. Switching to our MFLAR threat meter, you can see over the past week we've actually been boosting just a little bit in our X-ray flux, and that means by proxy the solar flux is also boosted. As a matter of fact, the X-ray flux actually reached the B floor for a short little while before dipping back down. This is due to some bright regions on the Earth-facing disk that actually some of them have been tw solar cycle 25 uh, bright regions, so this is really good news. But we aren't seeing any real flare activity as of yet. That will come. It's not coming yet but it is good news in the sense that we're staying in the low 70s for solar flux and that means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side and these conditions will likely continue over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back on the 9th, we actually did reach some active conditions due to some fast solar wind from a small coronal hole that was rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. It didn't last all that long, and we pretty much stayed at unsettled conditions, and then after that began to quiet down and quiet down and quiet down some more. And there's been a little bit of pockets of fast solar wind that kind of bump us back up to unsettled conditions for just a moment or so and back down. And this is actually good for you GPS users at low latitudes. This uh, slightly unsettled conditions actually helps your GPS reception, so you should be pretty happy to see this kind of thing. Now we're actually beginning to get some fast wind again, so you're seeing the uh, unsettled conditions ramp back up, and most likely this is going to be more of the same. We'll probably stay at unsettled conditions here over the next couple days. We have a small chance of active conditions, but, mo but most likely things will stay pretty much as they are. And now for your Martian Minute. With the Mars 2020 NASA rover launch planned for later this year and manned missions to mine ice on the moon by 2024, the race is on to find habitable places on the red planet for the first human colonists to land. So where will it be? Near water ice deposits, of course. But to find ice on Mars shallow enough for the colonists to dig up? Not such an easy task. Until now. In a paper published recently in Geophysical Research Letters, scientists have provided the first map of water ice believed to be as little as two and a half centimeters below the surface. Engineers planning a Martian mission have long known that water ice is a key for any potential landing site, because human colonists will have to harvest this ice for drinking water and for making rocket fuel. Using two heat-sensitive instruments aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, and the Mars Odyssey spacecraft, scientists have made what is affectionately called a treasure map of Mars. This map shows where water ice could potentially be within the digging ability of ice mining colonists. Using temperature changes on the Martian surface, along with other correlative data, the colored regions on the map reveal a trove of water ice beneath the surface throughout the Martian poles. But the real treasure is the particularly shallow deposits at mid-latitudes, which are ideal for colonists to mine. Silva Picou, the lead author on the study, says, quote, you wouldn't need a backhoe to dig up this ice. You could use a shovel, unquote. Indeed, back in 2008, NASA's Phoenix lander did exactly that, and it even took pictures of the ice it scraped up in the permafrost near the poles. Since then, 
MRO has taken many images of meteor impacts that have exposed similar ice beneath the surface. So while there are severe limits imposed on possible landing sites for human colonization, some promising possibilities have emerged. Scientists are particularly interested in an area just northwest of Olympus Mons called Arcadia Planitia, where the water ice is less than 30 centimeters below the surface. Highlighted in the map with an abundance of blue and purple, right now it is the clear winter due to its plentiful sunlight, warmer temperatures, and its generally lower elevation, which will provide more atmospheric drag to slow down an incoming spacecraft, perfect for a gentle landing. And speaking of perfect, Right now, near the equator at Elysian Planitia, the InSight lander is enjoying a nice sunny day. Currently, it's a balmy minus 16 degrees Celsius with a low of minus 97, and the winds are out of the south-southeast at 20 meters a second. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 24th. So you night sky watchers, now's a great time to catch those dim objects in the sky. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from the side. Now, when you look at the sun in Stereo's view, well, there's not a lot going on until about the 18th, and then you start seeing a glow on the east limb of the sun. That is from a bright region that's most likely a solar cycle 25 uh, bright region or possibly even sunspot, and it's because it's at high latitudes. Now, as this region begins to rotate into view, you can see it's actually been firing some, I don't know, maybe some flares or possibly even some solar storms. We've seen some stuff go off in coronagraphs. So it looks like this could be a solar storm producer, and as it rotates more into view, as a matter of fact, it'll rotate into Earth view probably in about the next three to four days. We're going to be paying attention to see if it's still launching solar storms. Now, one thing it will do is it will boost that solar flux probably back up into the mid-70s. So you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, in a little bit less than a week, you've definitely got some good stuff to look forward to. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are getting hit with that fast solar wind from that small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone right now. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we could see up to about a 40% chance of a major storm. But at that intensity level, it won't last all that long before it begins to die out. Now, mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 30% chance of active conditions. And again, this should die out reasonably quickly and keep things pretty much unsettled. But then we get that little mini solar storm that's going to hit us probably around the 25th. And at high latitudes, it might give us another chance for some storming for not, not for very long. And then at mid latitudes, we could once again get a small chance for active conditions. But most likely, it's going to remain unsettled. And this is just going to be something that's going to dance for high latitudes. So your aurora photographers, if you're up at the high latitudes, Keep your batteries charged. You might actually have a pretty nice week looking forward. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We basically have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users very happy. But we do have a few bright regions on the sun, and that is boosting the solar flux on Earth's day side. We are sitting in the low 70s right now, which means marginal radio propagation for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. And as we get to the end of this week and up into next week, you should see the solar flux numbers rise just a little bit. That's going to be due to that bright region that's rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side. So we could be in the mid 70s by next week. So you have something to look forward to. Now, also, because it is still solar minimum, even though the sun is beginning to wake up, we still have a higher impingement of cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is continuing to show signs of life. We are now beginning to get little mini solar storms being fired at Earth. And considering we haven't really seen any in quite some time, it's really nice to see them again. Now, along with some fast solar wind being sent to us from a coronal hole that's passing through the Earth strike zone right now, Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get some decent shows here throughout this coming week. 
Now, also, these solar storms, they're not firing any big radio bursts or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about radio comms for any satellite launches or anything like that right now. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys should be really loving life because we're still sitting at the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. We haven't dipped back into the poor range, and that's because that solar flux is just hanging in there. On top of that, you're going to get a boost at the end of this week and into the next week. We could actually be seeing solar flux going into the mid 70s it's like the balmy 70s so enjoy some decent radio propagation on earth's day side probably all into next week now you gps users well you know we have a small solar storm hitting right now it's not that big a deal it's only keeping us at unsettled conditions and that actually is good news for you because that actually helps to stabilize that upper atmosphere you just love these weak solar storms so as long as that continues it should give you some decent reception even at low latitudes as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and you stay away from aurora i'm tamitha scove thank you for watching